Hey guys, in this tutorial I decided to make something more complex with the GPT engineer. I'm going to create a new project and in the same folder where we have example in the Tetris game from my previous video. I'm going to go ahead and mkdir. At first I decided to call it game, but because we're going to have a labyrinth in the game for no other reason I decided to call it wizards. Okay, so I'm going to open my notepad and start typing description of the game. First, it's going to be a JavaScript game with one game level. Now I'm going to tell GPT engineer to create a start game menu with start button. When start button is pressed, the game enters main loop. Use a JavaScript canvas to render the game view. The game will have keyboard controls for moving the character left, right, up, and down. Game world consists of a game grid where each cell is 10 by 10 pixels. Main game world grid is 50 by 50 cells. When the game starts, do the following. Draw a labyrinth using a random labyrinth algorithm. Labyrinth grid consists of three types of cells, wall, empty space, and door. Wall is white, empty space is black, door is brown. On start, fill entire game screen with labyrinth data. Position main character as a single cell on the map. Main character should occupy one cell and be colored red. Make sure character starts in an empty cell on the labyrinth. Main character can be controlled by left, right, up, and down arrow keys. Main character moves one cell at a time. On each game animation frame, move enemies. Enemy can move one cell at a time. Collision detection. Enemy cannot walk on wall cell. Enemy cannot walk on door cell. Main character can walk on door cell. Collision detection. Main character cannot walk on wall cell. When game starts, position 10 enemies in the labyrinth in empty cell. One enemy occupies one cell on the grid and colored yellow. Now my game description is done, so I'm going to press Ctrl S, go to the project folder and save this as main underscore prompt file. And so we're pretty much done. So let's go back to the command line and build this project. Python dash M GPT underscore engineer dot main wizards. Now, we shouldn't be running this from the projects folder, but we need to go up one level. So here, GPT engineer, the same command. So here it's going to show us its own description of the game and the classes and the functions it's going to use. Um, to be honest, it's going to take about three minutes to build this and 46 cents in my OpenAI account. It's going to generate the entire code base for the game I just described. It's going to create a class and a function for every object in the game. And when it's done, you might see this error, assertion error, generated entry point command that was not bash. This is normal. It still generated the files, but it got stuck on this last step. The only thing is that when this error happens, it forgets to rename your files. So all of the generated JavaScript, HTML, and CSS files are going to have brackets in their file names. And the only thing we need to do is remove those brackets. So here in my wizards project, I'm going to go into workspace, remove the brackets around all of the generated files that have them. Here I have a character, JS, enemy, game, JS, index, HTML, input, and labyrinth. Okay, so now I'm going to open my browser and drag and drop the index.html, which is the main game file. Now, in the description of the game, I had a start button. So here it is in the upper left corner. But when I click on it, nothing happens. The game doesn't start. 
well, I did spend 40 cents on this. So I'm not just going to give up. Instead, I'm going to debug the code and hopefully we're going to get it to work. So I'm going to open my Visual Studio code and go to open folder and open this GPT engineer project that was generated, which was generated inside the workspace folder. So first I'm going to look in my index.html file. I think I'm going to open game object file. So here it is, start. This is what's supposed to be happening when the button is clicked. But here in the labyrinth file, we have the labyrinth generator algorithm, just as I described in the description of the game. It's nothing impressive. It's just a bunch of random walls and it's not even a complete labyrinth, but that's okay. We're going to take a look at enemy class later, but here's index.html again. I'm trying to figure out what happens when the start button is clicked and I'm sure that there's an event for the click action somewhere in the game object. So I'm going to head over to the game.js file here in the constructor object. That's the click event here. Okay. It's going to call the start function. So it's here. I'm going to add an alert just to debug and test and make sure that it's actually being executed. So I'm going to go back to my browser, refresh, click on the button and nothing happens. That's probably because there's no entry point for this entire game. So I'm back in index.html and here we need to add a starting point for our game. For some reason, GPT engineer skipped that part. So if I go to game.js, this is the main game object with the constructor. And at the bottom here, I noticed that they initialize, but initializing it inside this module doesn't make it globally available. And that's part of the problem. So I'm going to add my own entry point and that is the script tags. And here I'm going to type document dot event add event listener. And this is the entry point for about any JavaScript program, DOM content loaded. So I'm going to drop this new game initialization into that DOM content event and move all the other scripts here. Now, when I go back to the browser and try to launch, at least I get the alert for initializing the game. Nothing else happens. So I'm going to debug this in the browser press F12 and it's going to give me the exact error. So this one's being created in the character move function. So direction that X and Y are not being passed. So to make sure that this doesn't happen, I'm simply going to remove the direction coordinates. I'm just going to assign zero to each variable here. It's going to disable user movement, but that's okay at this point, as long as it removes that error. And there you have it, guys. All this debugging work is paying off. Now, after about five more minutes of debugging, just fixing console errors here and there, it's not very difficult considering the entire code base is pretty much done by GPT engineer. I ended up with what you're seeing on the screen right now. Now, the red dot is the main character and I'm moving around and it's blocking my view, I cannot walk through walls. What was surprising is that the yellow enemies are actually moving without me debugging the enemy object at all.